Uh, good morning, Narrow Gagers. Uh, well, this day has finally arrived. This is uh, the day that we uh, uh, winterize 58 and get her ready for winter. So uh, we had a uh, pretty good, albeit uh, truncated season this year for 2020. Uh, we didn't do any public trips. Uh, we had a few times we operated for uh, for our own members. And yesterday we did a uh, steam whistle blow for the Mahoning Valley Railroad Heritage Association. And now that all that's done, and uh, this is 11th of October, it's time to uh, drain the water out and uh, put her away for the winter and then start uh, start taking apart some of the areas that uh, some parts that we're going to be uh, working on and making some improvements on the locomotive over the winter uh, pretty much what we have to do is make sure that all the water has been removed from the locomotive so uh, it's still warm from yesterday so it's still got the boiler full of water and it's still pretty warm uh, which will be good because when we drain it out then most of that, uh, <clears throat> most of the moisture in there will also flash off and, and evaporate rather nicely. So it'll leave the boiler rather dry. Uh, what we'll also do is take out all the plugs. Um, some of the valve bonnets we'll take off, get water out of the valves, and take the injectors off. Drain the water out of the saddle tank. Uh, open up all the, uh, the washout plugs. Uh, get inside the uh, firebox, clean all the uh, the ash out of the firebox, clean all of the uh, ash out of the uh, smoke box, and uh, you know generally get her ready for uh, for the freezing weather. And up front, uh, some of the work we're going to do over the winter is uh, you may have noticed in the videos that it has an offbeat exhaust. So we're going to take the cylinders apart and uh, inspect them. We haven't looked at uh, the valves or the cylinders since uh, since the engine's been restored. So take a look at all that, see the condition, and then also uh, set up to um, to tram the or actually set the valves on this, uh, which we never did. I mean, when we started running and uh, it, it sounded all right, and we were going in reverse up to a little two percent grade on on our, on our track. Just sounded perfectly fine but then once we started going forward up the big hill that's where you notice the offbeat exhaust so it's kind of odd that it's uh um sounds all right in reverse but not going forward so we're going to check all that out uh, another thing we're going to do is uh somewhere somewhere down here we're going to drill ports for uh, a, a steam engine indicator so that we can take indicator cards of the locomotive in operation and that should uh, that should help us uh, figure out um, how square the locomotive is running off the indicator cards uh, something else probably going to get done is that this packing is uh, is bad so that's going to get replaced uh, we've, we've got a few other uh, improvements to do the electrical system will be finished the headlights um, and uh, switches in the cab and all that so we can run headlights. We can also have lights underneath. Uh, I'd like to put a couple of lights down under here that shine onto the running gear so we run at night. You can you can see the running gear still. The, uh, <clears throat> the everlasting uh, uh, blow down valve is going to get put in here. We're going to take this, uh, this uh, gate valve off. And probably the biggest thing we're going to be doing is building a new tender. Uh, this little tender here, we're going to hold on to it. Um, and uh, it may have other uses. Uh, but it's it's just way too, too uh, small for what it is we want to do with the locomotive. So we're going to build a new tender and it's going to use uh, these trucks here. And so that means the car is going to be uh, a lot longer, it'll be wider, going to have more uh, coal capacity, it'll have capacity for a couple of riders on the, on the car without being in anyone's way. And there'll also be a uh, space in the back that we can put a gas-driven air compressor and an air tank so that we can put air brakes on the locomotive. Because there's no room on 58 for an air compressor at all. 
So um, in order to make air to run the locomotive, we're going to uh, um, we're going to put the air compressor and all that on the tender, run the lines up into the cab. That also means that the uh, that the steam brake is going to go away and be replaced with air brakes. So one of the problems we have with 58 because of the uh, well the steam brake cylinders were um, made from air brake cylinders and they leak steam quite a bit. So the thing is when you've got the uh, the brake set on this it just exhausts steam constantly and you always have a cloud of steam around it. <clears throat> and uh, the other thing is that you know, if we're running at lower steam pressure, you're, you're also diminishing your brake capacity. So, uh, the uh, when we put the air brakes in, uh, that'll be uh, addressed so that no matter what steam pressure you're running at, you're going to have the same amount of brakes all the time. Uh, we'll add a couple more cylinders to the back end so that we can have four brake shoes instead of just two. So, we'll uh, drastically increase the braking capacity. And also, with uh, air brakes, we have the potential of uh, having train brakes and locomotive brakes. So the, uh, the tender can have brakes on it, and the, uh, the passenger car that we're going to use can have brakes on it as well. So those are some of the, uh, the upgrades that we're planning on. I don't know how much that we're going to get done over the winter, uh, but uh, you know that's at least what's on the, on the agenda. All right, the first thing we're going to start out with is draining the water out of the boiler. So uh, this valve was put in specifically for the whistle blow. It's a uh, two-inch gate valve, and then we had the uh, connection to the steam hose going over to the manifolds. But um, in order to, uh, to drain the water out, we need to have a vent. So we'll open this up and give ourselves a vent and then drain the water out of the uh, blowdown. Right. What we also do is all the valves. See all that water in there? Yeah, so you take the valves apart, get all that water out. So that would freeze if that was if these weren't taken off. All right, if you'll remember from a couple months ago, we did that uh, that uh, washout, and the boiler was pretty clean at that time, and we only ran it what, two or three days after that. So let's see let's see what's in the uh, in the mud ring here after a couple of times operating. Oh, look at that! So that's the. Uh, that's the water treatment still dissolving away the uh, the scale and all that's in the boiler. And uh, oh yeah, there's there's chunks of scale in there. So yep, as she was running, breaking away more scale. That's good. That's good news. Oh yeah, we might have a bunch of bunch of new scale in here. It's excellent. Now one other thing I'm going to do here, which I haven't done before, is identify each plug with the hole they go in. So this one here, mud ring right rear, which means that it goes right there. And I'll do that for all the new plugs so that uh, they won't get lost and they all go back where they belong. Alright, this is the right side injector line going to the boiler. See what we have in here. Oh, yeah. Plenty of water. That's why you drain everything. <laughs> 